Next into the den, a luxury lingerie brand with a difference. The brainchild of Edinburgh-based Caroline Kennedy Alexander and Sarah Bell Jones, who harnessed personal adversity and transformed it into the driving force behind their business. Emotionally, it's been a massive journey for all of our women who have been part of this process over the last three years of product developing. It's really important to highlight that a bra is not just a functional item, it is an emotional support, and that's what we're about. We support our ladies in more ways than one. Hello Dragons, I'm Caroline. And I'm Sarah, and we are Love Rose Lingerie. Today we are looking for £70,000 in exchange for 15% of our company. Love Rose is named in memory of my sister Rose that I lost to breast cancer. I watched another sister Mary go through breast cancer, and then I got it, twice. I had a double mastectomy with reconstruction, and there's not much I don't know about how this makes a woman feel. Her confidence, her femininity, because it's not just about the physical scars, it's about the emotional and the psychological scars too. The post-surgery laundry market in the UK is currently worth £7 million, and it's been catered for primarily by medical brands, which are functional but old-fashioned. Love Rose offers a luxury choice which is thoughtfully designed and, dare I say it, sexy. We've spent the last three years working closely with our focus groups to design and prototype our range of lingerie to suit the different outcomes of surgery. Women like me had no choice in having breast surgery, but we deserve a choice in our lingerie. Love Rose, love yourself. Thank you. Thank you. High-end lingerie intended to help post-operative breast cancer patients look and feel fantastic is the proposition from Caroline Kennedy Alexander and Sarah Bell Jones. Can I ask, um, so how supportive is it? Not only is it really, really supportive, but also with the added excitement of being sexy again, because I've got every right to be as well still. <laughs> The duo are asking for £70,000 in return for a 15% share of their company. Thank you yes, so thank much, you. girls. Thank, thank you very much, ladies. Deborah Meaden is first to quiz the entrepreneurs. So I absolutely love this and I love everything about it. I can see the difference you'd make to, to people's lives. But are you sure you're not the only people doing it? No, there are some independents, but we're the only ones that have the real luxury element to it and right. stretch. Right. So how many post-surgery brands are there? Because I think Bravissimo do them as well. Um, there's a lot of high street bras, um, but again, it's like, um, they're all following the status quo of the design. Right, so there are other people doing more entry level. Yes, yes. But, but you've, you've positioned yourself. Yes. Right. And price points, how much do they sell for? The bras range from 85 to 90. What are they costing you to make? 29 pounds to make. Now, in terms of the design, what are the features? So you're holding our Hey Good Looking bra. All of our bras have fun names. Fun names. Um, so that is a pocketed bra for a woman who wears one yes, so that's or two. Or there's your pocket. So that's that bit. And then what's yep. the purpose of this design? So the hammock at the back, that's some of our engineering. That's how the breasts stay up in a soft bra. So it adds structure because you, you haven't got the underwiring. Yes. One question for you. Have you got any design protection in there? Because this is clearly a very well thought out bra. Mm -hmm. They're registered. We haven't done IP because in fashion, as you know, it's ticket, hard. It's, it's, it's hard. No, but I just wondered if there was any technical piece in there that you were able to protect. No, we just we have cleverly designed them. You've just cleverly yeah. designed them. The entrepreneur's bras may be ingeniously designed, but their lack of patentable potential could create an early stumbling block to drag an investment. Now, fashion tycoon Tuka Suleiman 
want to know more about their company's success to date. Let's just talk about the business. Mm -hmm. You've been going since when? So we self-launched in September 2020, mid-pandemic. Any sales? Yes, yep. 7,600. So it is small. It's very yep. small, we're very um, modest. I know this industry very well. Yeah. Building a passion brand is very difficult. I know. Yeah. Your problem starts is that you're trying to cater for a very, very small market. However, your cost of the product is high already yes, for yep. what it is. And therefore, you've got one arm behind your back before you start. You have 29 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to change things for a second in my head. You want to cater mm -hmm. a product to women that have got needs. Mm -hmm. And what I would have thought is if you'd come in here and said, we are the brand that will help women in all these specialty bras which they require. Women who are pregnant want a pregnancy bra. Mm -hmm. Women who are breastfeeding want a breastfeeding bra. Women who have surgery want a surgery bra. What I'm saying is to build a brand like this is very difficult because you have very small USP. I think I don't think we so, are Chica. So? I think it's the opposite. I've got to be honest. I yeah, think building I'm, a brand. Can I tell you something? When you have, when you L building listen to me, yeah. I've been at this for forty-five years. So don't tell and me. And I've been, that, I've been you know, building I'm the biggest you, brands in the world for the last I'm ten years, Tuka. Exactly what I think. And I'm telling you what I think. You don't want a super broad, unemotional. You're going to get investment, but, girls. Okay, so Love Rose has nothing to do with pregnancy. If you want to build a brand amongst a small group of people, a really clear powerful storyline founded by the loss of her sister targeting a niche audience who have a very big problem in their life with a clear emotional message i mean what else do you want well, then invest in. it appears the challenges of building a brand in a hugely competitive market are enough to provoke discord amongst even the dragons is an empathetic sarah davies poised to restore a much needed degree of harmony to the den. That really spoke to me when you came in and pitched at the beginning. I have friends who have had mastectomies. I can absolutely see how bringing a little bit of luxury and mm -hmm. that feeling sexy back to that market yeah. mm -hmm. is so important. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of what Tuga was pushing at mm -hmm. was, as an investor, mm -hmm. we want to understand the real scale of the opportunity. So I was quite surprised when Deborah was familiar with another brand doing this. Yeah. And my concern is I wouldn't spend 80 to 90 pounds on a bra mm -hmm. and I can afford to do that. Yeah. You know, I spend 30 pounds. But perhaps on there a bra. are a few if you were in the situation where you had had a life-changing operation and you needed to bring your sexy back, you might do. I completely understand that. I However, my worry is you are not solving a problem for everyone. No. You are solving a problem for a niche of that market yes. who can afford yeah. to so, justify that spend yeah. and on that luxury. Yeah, it's a luxury product. And we chose that market to go into to start the brand because that was where the gap in the market was. But very soon we will be bringing in an entry, an level, entry level product. One. Which yeah. will but sit it with sounds the same like that's ethos. a more crowded market mm -hmm. and such a difficult industry. Mm -hmm. And I always said I would never, I wouldn't take a gold cow and get involved in the lingerie market. Okay. So I'm sorry, guys. That's okay. Wish you all the best with the business. If I can help in any way, I'd love to, but I'm out. Disappointment for Caroline and Sarah as a first dragon declined the deal. Deborah Meaden was perturbed by their product's lack of protectability, but has she seen sufficient opportunity in post-op lingerie to table an offer? I don't think I've ever sat here and wished that a market would shrink as much as I wish this market would shrink. I think it's lovely, but I think it is niche niche to the point of it being very difficult for me to understand how I would get a return on my investment. Okay, that's fine. Um, but I genuinely wish you all, all the best you. of luck and I Thank think you. they are lovely, beautifully designed. Okay. I'm out. Caroline, Sarah, it's great, it's inspiring and I have no doubt in my mind that you'll have a great business out of this. But I think that 
this isn't a type of business for me as an investor because I think that when you want to look to try and build a brand like this, specifically in lingerie, to be really exciting big business, it takes millions, if not tens of millions. Okay. So I wish you the very best, but it's just not an investment for me today. Okay. And I'm going to say I'm out. Um, but good luck. Okay. Thank you. Ladies, uh, what can I say? I, I think building a brand, especially a fashion brand, is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Especially from the beginning, you know, trying to get your collection together, get it made, and then find the factory to make your volumes because you haven't got any sales. Mm -hmm. yeah, so they charge you more, so you've got to charge more to the consumer. So it's a vicious circle, mm -hmm. you know. For that reason, you know, surely as an investment, I say I'm not going to invest in them out. Okay. Okay. Four dragons are now out. Only Stephen Bartlett remains. He's helped build some of the biggest brands in British fashion. So is he willing to add Caroline and Sarah's creations to his collection? First of all, thank you for such an inspiring presentation. I think you have a great product. I think you have a great brand story that I know is driven by two great entrepreneurs that are not going to give up regardless of how tough things get. And I think from a marketing perspective, having a clear USP and a clear audience to target, whether that's with digital ads or with your, your brand messaging, is actually going to be the best chance you have of creating a customer base, which you can then expand upon. Yes, yeah. I think you have demonstrated that this is a business, but I don't think you've demonstrated that it's an investable business. And for that reason, unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to say that I'm out. Thanks. Thanks, Caroline. Thank you so much. Thank you All the best, Thank you okay? so much, guys. Sadly for Caroline and Sarah, they must leave empty-handed. Whilst the duo's aims were universally applauded, their business couldn't part the dragons from their cash. Disappointed, but it's not going to stop us. We will just pick ourselves up and carry on. We've been on a mission. We'll pick our boobs up and... Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs>